Okay, in this problem, we're looking at the forces on a wind turbine. So let's write down what we've been given here. The first thing is the tip speed ratio. The symbol we used in class is lambda, which is equal to 9. Remember, that's the ratio of the tip speed of the end of the blade to the wind speed. When it gives you the wind speed of 8.94, that's the upstream wind speed, so that's our U0. 8.94 and the angle of attack that's the standard angle of attack for any kind of airfoil and it is 7.19 degrees that's going to determine the lift and drag coefficients now remember we don't take the entire blade when we're trying to analyze the forces we just take a little section of the blade so this 1.22 meters is actually L, and that's used for calculating lift and drag forces. And then the cord length, uh, once again for that small section, is 0.811 meters, and center of radius, that's R, 5.49 meters. Now what this means is if you have the, the turbine blade, say it's really long like this, what we're looking at is just a small section of this. And so L would be this. The cord length would go sort of across perpendicular to L. And R would be the distance from the center axis of rotation out to that particular element. So there's our R. OK, so. Uh, we're given a flow angle and an axial interference factor. Those have to do with how the wind is affected when it actually gets to the turbine blade. So recall from class that that picture where we were looking at the wind speed upstream, U0, and then the wind at the hub, right before it hit the blade, the, the tip of the blade kind of looks like this profile. And so this was U1, and that was the hub speed. And if you recall, U1 is related to that axial interference factor by 1 minus A times U0, where A, we should put it up here, axial interference factor is the 0 0.390. And so the first thing we can do is calculate the wind speed at the hub, put in 1 minus 0 0.390 times the 8.94 and the effective wind speed at the hub is 5.45 meters per second. Okay, now remember when the wind comes and hits the blade, the blade turns and in, the reaction to that is the wind gets deflected. So if this if this particular blade would be turning up in this view, then the wind is going to be deflected down. And so we draw that deflection here. So it's going to be deflected down. And remember that vector, hang on, I don't want that extra vector there. Where's my eraser? I'll see eraser. Okay, so this vector is negative omega r where that is the uh, the deflection of the wind down because the blade is turning up. Now the relative wind speed that the airfoil section actually feels is the vector sum of these two. And that's this vector down at an angle. And notice how now the orientation of this airfoil is such that the wind blows over it like this, just what we'd expect. And we have lift and drag because of that wind going over it like that. So this V relative is the important velocity used to calculate lift and drag. So the flow angle is phi. That's this angle right here. And we're given the flow angle. It says in the problem that the flow angle is 8.44 degrees. So that's phi. So phi equals flow angle. And that's 8.44 degrees. 
Okay, so we can see from this triangle that that relative velocity, V relative, is equal to U1 divided by the sine of the flow angle. And so this is equal to 5.45 meters per second divided by the sine of 8.44 degrees. And that now is an extremely high velocity, and that is the effective velocity across that airfoil that's going to result in the lift and drag forces along the airfoil. Okay, so the next thing we want to do, so this was A, this was B, oh, I numbered them 1, 2, that's okay, C, now we want the lift and drag forces. So remember from class that we were given the lift force on any airfoil in general is the coefficient of lift times one half the density of air times, now the speed that we're going to use is this relative speed along the top of the airfoil squared times cord length times section length. Okay, and we have all these numbers. We're given this coefficient of lift up in the problem. It's 1.186 times 1 half density of air. We're just going to use 1.23 um, instead of 1.225. We'll use 1.23 kilograms per cubic meter. Then we use that relative velocity, 37.16 squared times the cord length, 0 0.811 times, that's meters, and then times the section length, 1.22 meters, which gives us a lift force of 995 newtons. I'll draw the vectors for that in a minute. Let's do the drag force. So the drag force, oh, this is still part C, it's okay. Uh, drag force, similar equation, but now we use the coefficient of drag instead of the coefficient of lift. Everything else is the same. So the one half rho velocity squared, cord length, section length. Put all those numbers in. The drag coefficient is given above, and it's 0 0.019. So the number that goes there is 0 0.019, which is much smaller. On the lift coefficient, this comes out to only 16 newtons. Okay, so now how does this work? We've got this airfoil. This is remember, we're looking at the tip of that, uh, we're looking end on at the tip. And by definition, if this is the relative velocity direction, the drag force is parallel to that. So there's F drag, and the lift force is perpendicular to that. It's much, much bigger. There's F lift. Okay. Now those are not the end result of these of the forces on this um, turbine blade, because remember this blade now is attached to its base, you know, like this, into the ground. And it's the force trying to tip it over, the thrust force, and then the turning force, the upward force that we're interested in. So now we take these lift and drag forces and we resolve them into their components. Now remember this flow angle up here is going to be this angle here. Because remember lift and drag are perpendicular to each other. So now the components of the lift force, the x component, and the x component of the drag force together will equal the thrust force. So the thrust force is to the right. That's the force trying to tip the turbine over. It does not contribute to the rotational motion of the blades. So this thrust force is the sum of the x components of lift and drag. So it would be the lift force times cosine phi plus the drag force times sine phi. 
Okay, so if we put those numbers in, we've got lift force 995, cos of 8.44 plus 16 times the sine of 8.44 to give us a resultant thrust force of 986 newtons. Okay, so that's the force trying to tip it over. Now, more importantly, is the force oops, that is trying to, that will turn the blade. The turning force is perpendicular to the end of the blade. So it's up like this. There's F turn. And F turn is the resultant Y component. So F turn is the upward component of lift. So it's F lift sine phi. That's the Y component of lift. But the drag component of lift is, or sorry, the, the Y component of drag is down. So we have to subtract that. So it's F drag cos phi. When you put those numbers in, you get 130 newtons. Now, it doesn't take nearly as much force to turn that turbine blade up. And remember, that's just for a small section. So you would have to break the entire length of the blade, which maybe is as long as 40 meters, and you would add it up, all these little turning forces, so that you, if you look sideways along the blade, so say you're looking like this, and this blade is out like this, each little section would have a turning force. So let's say this one's going counterclockwise. This would have a turning force, and then this would have a turning force. And they would be different values depending on the cord length and depending on the angle of attack. But all these lifting, so these are all the lift forces, which would then result in the blade turning in a counterclockwise direction. Okay. Now, the next thing, the question says, what is the contribution to thrust from both lift and drag? Well, basically, thrust is pretty well all from lift. So, because the x component of drag is pretty small. So the, pr the proportion of thrust from the lift would be that x component of lift over the thrust component, and that's pretty well 100%. That's pretty close to 100%, it's 0.99 something. So this was about one. So pretty well all the thrust comes because of that lift, lift force. Whereas uh, the, the proportion of turn that comes from lift, Turn from the lift force would be that vertical component of lift over F turn. And that's more than 100% because you're actually subtracting the drag vertical component, which is down. Okay, so. It's, the lift force is the crucial force. It's pretty well the thing that determines whether the turbine's going to tip over and um, the turning force. Okay, that's it.